Hi guys, it's Danny. Welcome to the second part of this video in case you missed the first part where I discuss about some important general rules that apply to all orchids when you first receive them. Click somewhere here on the screen and you will watch that video. Also, you can visit the description. You have a link there as well. Okay, in the second part of this video, we will try to identify what type of orchid you actually received and how to further care for it in the first few days of owning your very first orchid. Okay, let's start with the Phalaenopsis orchid because it really is the most popular orchid out there. Now, these orchids, as you can see, have leaves coming from each side of the stem and the flower spike actually comes somewhere from beneath the leaves. It also produces quite a lot of blooms depending on the variety, which can have multiple colors. These blooms can actually last for a few months on your orchid, so I can see why they are so popular. So, if you just received a Phalaenopsis orchid, congratulations, it's really one of the easiest orchids to care for and I'm sure you will do very, very well. Okay, let's presume you actually watched the first part of this video and you placed your orchid somewhere bright but away from direct sunshine. For Phalaenopsis orchids, this is ideal further on as well. They really don't like direct sunshine. These orchids do great in intermediate light or bright light but never direct sunshine, especially in the summer summertime. Direct sun can actually burn the leaves very, very fast. So keeping this orchid in bright shade, let's say, is the way to go. Now Phalaenopsis orchids usually come in clear plastic pots. This is a very good idea because it gives you a look at the root system. Now the root system of a Phalaenopsis orchid can actually tell you when this orchid needs to be watered. If you see here, my orchid has silvery roots. This means this orchid is dry and actually can do with a bit of watering. So if you just received an orchid which looks like this, has silvery roots, you're actually pretty safe to water it and you actually should water it. The best way to water this orchid is to actually soak it in a separate container. But before I show you how to do that, I just want to mention something. It's never a good idea to use ice cubes with Phalaenopsis orchids or any type of other orchid you might have. And this is because these orchids are actually exotic plants. In their natural habitat, they are not used to freezing water. Very cold water can actually damage the root system tremendously. So no matter what you hear out there, do not use ice cubes with any of your orchids kids. What you want to use is room temperature water or lukewarm water. Also, do not use bottled water, mineral water with your orchids because it's pretty hard. I will not go into many details, but usually you are much safer with your tap water rather than bottled water. So as I was saying, the best way to water a Phalaenopsis orchid is by actually soaking it. For this, you can use the decorative container it came with or any other type of bowl that does not have drainage holes. So you can place your orchid in the decorative container or bowl of your choice and then get a watering can filled with lukewarm water and start to pour on the side of the orchid. Try not to touch the leaves or the crown or any other part of the orchid. Just find a place in the pot which does not actually water the stem or the leaves of the orchid. Now fill the bowl with water to the brim. You don't want the level of water to actually reach the crown of the orchid or the stem of the orchid. This will suffice. You should leave the orchid soak into this water for about 10 minutes or so. After about 10 minutes, you can pull out the orchid from the bowl. It's a good idea to place this orchid now somewhere where it can drain very well. I usually use dishes. So I just place it here and leave it here for about another 10 minutes, just so excessive water runs out of the pot. What I'd like to show you now is how these roots will look like when they're wet. As you can see, they changed color. They went from a silvery look to a pretty nice green look. Now, if your orchid from the store comes with these types of roots, you can see they're green and they're moist, you should definitely not water it just yet. Wait until the roots get silvery again until you water it. After the orchid has drained very, very well, just dispose of this excessive water and place the orchid back in its place. Whether you keep it in a decorative container or a dish, it's really your choice, but never let this type of orchid sit in water, or any type of orchid for that matter. You really want to drain it very, very well. 
Okay, so these were the starting ideas for a Phalaenopsisoid kit. I have a more extended video on how to properly care for these orchids on the long run, so if you click somewhere here, you can find the link towards that video. I also have a video on how to cut a Phalaenopsis flower spike, depending on the situation. So you have the link towards that video on the screen, but if you cannot click on the screen, you have all these links in the description below, so feel free to check those out as well. Another very common orchid is the Oncidium orchid and its hybrids, the intergenerics we call them. They come in so many shapes and colors, it's mind-boggling. They are actually my favorite orchids. So you might actually have received a Oncidium orchid. How to know that you have an Oncidium? Well, usually most of them have these formations, bulb-like formations, that we actually call pseudobulbs. The leaves come on either side of the bulb and also on top, while the flower spike usually comes from between the pseudobulb and the first leaf. Now these types of orchids, unlike the Phalaenopsis orchid you saw earlier, don't come in clear pots, so it's pretty hard to see the root system. Also, their roots are usually white, so they're not silvery like a Phalaenopsis orchid. Now this type of orchid doesn't like to dry out completely like a Phalaenopsis orchid. It actually likes to stay always slightly moist. So the way to water this orchid is when the media is almost completely dry, you should give it a good soak like we did with the Phalaenopsis orchid. But how to know when to water this orchid? Because we cannot really see through the pot and also the roots are not silvery and they don't necessarily go green like in the case of a Phalaenopsis orchid. Well, the best way to know is to actually stick a finger inside the media. Try to go a few centimeters deep. If you notice your finger is quite moist to the touch after you pull it out, then it's not time to water it just yet. But when you notice that your finger is barely moist, that's the right time to water this orchid, following the same procedure and soaking method like with the Phalaenopsis orchid. Also, another way to figure out if your Oncidium orchid requires some water is to check the pseudobulb. If it's shriveled, you see it has these lines, it might do with some water actually. So soak it very well and in the next few days this pseudobulb can actually plump back up and look nice once again. Now, unlike the Phalaenopsis orchid, Oncidium orchids actually do like bright light, so find a location on the long term which offers the brightest light you can, but try to keep it away from direct noon sun. Some sun in the morning time and late afternoon, it's quite okay for these orchids, they will appreciate it, but direct noon sun will probably scorch the leaves of your orchid as well, but as a general rule, they do require brighter light than a Phalaenopsis orchid. Now, if you would like to learn more about how to care for Oncidiums throughout the year, you can visit a link right here on the screen. It will take you to that video. If you cannot see the link, check the description. All the links will be in the description. So, basic care for Oncidium orchids can be applied to their hybrids as well, with a few exceptions. Cattleya orchids, again, are a very popular species of orchids. Usually, Cattleya produce a pseudobulb which is elongated, unlike the Oncidium which is quite stubby. They also produce flowers from on top of the cane and they can have two leaves on the top of the cane, like in this case, or one leaf. It depends on the type of Calia it is, but usually all the time the flowers will come from right on top of the pseudobulb and also the pseudobulbs will be elongated. Calia orchids are those types of orchids which actually do like super bright light. So place them in the brightest location you can and also you can give them direct sunshine. Try to keep them away from direct hot noon sun because they can still get some sunburn. But as a general rule, they do require even more light than Oncidium orchids. Calia orchids also like to dry out in between waterings, so water a Calia orchid when the media is completely dry. If you cannot see through the pot, use the method I told you about with the Oncidium orchid. When the media is completely dry and your finger does not have any more signs of moisture, that's the time to water a Calia orchid, and you can soak it just like I showed you with the Phalaenopsis orchid. I do have a more extensive video on how to properly care for Calia orchids, so you can find the link on the screen here or in the description, and you can visit it and learn more how to care for these orchids throughout the year. And the last species we're gonna talk about is the Dendrobium. Now, Dendrobiums can be of multiple types. Here we have some nobile types, which produce flowers from right 
close to the cane, but there is also that type of dendrobium which produces a flower spike, kind of like a Phalaenopsis orchid. I find these, however, to be more popular than the other ones, maybe I'm mistaking. But in any case, dendrobiums produce a tall and rather thin pseudobulb, which we call a cane. It's pretty much the same structure that an Oncidium and a Callea would have, but it just has a different shape. Usually dendrobiums do prefer bright light, pretty much like an Oncidium. A bit of sunshine in the morning can do them good, but keep them away from direct noon sun, because that can burn the leaves. Also, dendrobium nobili orchids like to slightly dry out in between waterings. So when you see that your finger is almost almost dry, you can actually water this type of dendrobium. I have a more extensive video on how to care for these dendrobiums. They are a bit tricky, but you will find out. You can visit that link right here on the screen or you can visit the description and you will find a link towards that video as well. Okay, so these were the most popular orchids that are most likely to arrive to you in the form of a gift. There are other species out there as well, but they're kind of rare. Of course, there are other ideas we can talk about, like when you should repot an orchid and how to figure out if your orchid is sick or not and so on, but that's a totally different chapter in our orchid story. And if you want to learn about that, just ask me. You can also visit my playlists and channel because I have tons of video on repotting and sick orchids and so on. But if you'd like to know something in particular that I did not mention, just leave me a comment and I will direct you to tutorials that I made or maybe I can answer through a message and so on. Just feel free to ask me anything at this point. So in the end, I just want to say welcome to our happy club of orchid nerds. I hope you stick around because it's a wonderful hobby. It might be a bit overwhelming, but take things one step at a time. Take your time, learn about these orchids, how they function and so on. And in time, you will learn how to care for your orchid properly and you will not have any more trouble. I'm sure of that. So already, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to watch more videos from me, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Again, you can leave me. Um, questions, comments, uh, whatever you like in the, in the comment section below. Visit the description for all the other links. And yeah, thank you so much for joining. I hope you are having a great time and I'll see you next time. Bye!